My name is Eric Chanteau. I'm 27 years old. And what brings me up here today is um, the relationship I have with Doug Ullman and the, uh, the Livestrong Foundation. Um, they became two big elements in my life when I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. I think, um, you know, half full to me means awareness. Uh, you know, people come out and do these events uh, for different reasons, um, but to me, the thousand or so people that are going to be out there tomorrow with the however many thousand more who are just going to be there to support the participants, it's all about getting awareness to those people. And I think awareness is the biggest weapon we have in the fight against cancer. Um, it's, it, it beats chemotherapy, it beats radiation. Um, because, you know, chemotherapy and radiation only work if you catch things early. And that's all about being aware of yourself and being aware of your body. So, um, you know, the, the, the half full triathlon is just an incredible event that will raise not only um, a great amount of money for the fight against cancer, but more than that, the, uh, the awareness and kind of help spread that little, that little viral awareness um, that, that I think is extremely crucial in this fight. I was in this exact position um, two years ago, right after I was diagnosed. Um, I, I, got, I came to a Livestrong Challenge in Austin, the bike race, where you know, 3,200 people ride. So it was an event just like this, and it was a month and a half after I had surgery. So I kind of threw myself into it as well. But the biggest piece of advice I have to, to young adults or, or adults or whoever is, is going through a cancer experience, it's to take ownership of that experience. Um, when you sit in a doctor's office and you, you hear the words, you know, you've got cancer, um, the first thing that, that happens, I think, is, is you experience this loss of control. Um, all of a sudden, these doctors are coming up with this battle plan to essentially save your life, and you have to do this, you can't do that, you need to do, you know, go here, and all of a sudden, all this control is, is taken out of your life. And so I think, um, I think that the hardest thing to do, but one of the biggest things to do, is to get that control back. And, you know, it's been two years for me, and, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do that, uh, and, and how to live the rest of my life as a survivor. But, um, you know, getting control over something that rocks your life this bad is, is, uh, is a hard thing to do, but I think it's one of the, the most important things to do. Um, not only for, for your, your physical health, but also your mental health, too. Um, and so really, really getting control of, of your situation and taking ownership of it, um, I think, is, is a key element. My preparation for this, this event is actually um, not optimal. Uh, I actually just ended my season in August, so I'm just coming off about a three-week break here, and uh, I'm actually getting back into training right now and getting back into the swing of things. So um, there's probably going to be a good amount of pain involved tomorrow uh, with me not being in the best shape right now. But um, th this is a great event because it is kind of a training event for me right now. And um, you know, from a, from a physical standpoint, it'll be a, a good test to see where, where I've come over the past couple weeks and getting back into training and, um, and, and just kind of be a good beginning of the season marker for me in terms of uh, where I'm at right now and, and where I need to get to over the next couple months. A big part of, of the half full and this weekend and events like this, it, it doesn't matter if it's you know, uh, an, an event where you have three or 4,000 people or an event where you have 30 or 40 people. Um, events like this mean so much to the cancer community and the cancer world, and, and I, I think people who haven't experienced that um, and who haven't been a part uh, of an event like this, it, it's kind of hard for them to grasp, but, you know, I encourage people to come out even if you, you know, if you haven't had cancer yourself or you don't know someone who's had cancer, which is not very many people, um, then, then just come out and, and check it out anyway because these events are way more than just charity events and they mean so much more to so many, so many people, um, you know, myself included. Um, this is the, the honor cards in there and the, the, the in memory of, of cards. Um, you know, it means a lot to, to write a loved one on that. Um, and I mean, tomorrow, you know, I'm, I'm the, for the first time, I'll be writing my dad's name on one. Um, so it's, it's not just 
it's not just about coming out and raising money and raising awareness, but it's also um, you know, honoring the people who have lost their battle with cancer um, or, or are in the middle of one right now. And you, know, you will see a lot of emotions come out on the course tomorrow. You always do, especially across the finish line. Um, and and I, I think that that is, that is something special that not a lot of people know about, whether they're associated with the cancer community or not. And so I think events like this really kind of help bring that out. And that's something special and, and additional that a lot of people don't really know about. Being a, a young adult, um, cancer survivor and then and then having um, a parent you know my, my dad um, with with his fight in in battling lung cancer I mean he was diagnosed a year before I was diagnosed and the doctors gave him eight to twelve months to live and um, and he fought for three and a half years and it is it's a it's a bond that you know a, a parent and their child should never have but it's one that my dad and I did have, and, and the best advice I ever got in dealing with this was from him. You know, he said, before I went to the Olympics, um, when I still had cancer, it was, you know, he said, Eric, either you've got cancer or it has you. It's as simple as that. And this was coming from a guy who, who had a diagnosis where there was no light at the end of his tunnel, and he chose to wake up every day and not let it take control of his life, and he, he still got to do the things that he loved to do, um, for as long as he physically could. Um, the, the hard part about, about knowing what cancer is and, and having it yourself and then watching a loved one go through it um, is, is you, you think you're, you're, you're prepared. And um, you know the, the two years that I've spent in this world and the things I've seen, um, I thought was going to prepare me for, for how my, my dad would pass away and, and nothing can prepare you for when you walk in, in that room and, uh, and it's your parent and it's your loved one and you see what three and a half years of intense chemo and radiation and um, a lot of metastasizing has done to somebody and um, you know it is uh, it all goes back to that awareness and, and you try and prepare and you try and be aware and um, you just, you know, there's, there's nothing that can prepare you for something like that. So um, the best thing is, is to just emerge yourself and educate yourself and that way you're not quite as taken by surprise. Um, and that, again, that's a hard thing to do. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the way my dad and, and I and, and the rest of my family chose to look at this and it doesn't necessarily um, give you a whole lot of answers about why it happened, but it, I think it helps and it, it makes things a little easier when, when the end finally does come.